Coming up on Colonial Sports Center, breaking news on one RMU alum who is staying professional. We've got three athletes in the studio tonight, the most we've ever had, two from the ice and one from the gridiron. And Nico Brent pulls the unthinkable against the Colonials. Coming up next. And welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Before we start, happy Leaf Erickson Day from our fine friends at SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, yes, from our hearts to yours. So we have a lot. However you can. We have a lot to get to today. So let's uh, get right to it. It's been a crazy month for former RMU great AJ Dalton after signing with the Pittsburgh Power of the Arena Football League. His Facebook page now says that he was reassigned to the Orlando Predators, also of the Arena Football League. And speaking of his former team, an 0-4 start set the Colonials back for their 2014 campaign with a new quarterback at the helm. The only direction to go was up, right? Well, Richard sophomore Derek Abbott had his hands full with the fierce Monmouth Hawks. Let's let's go to the highlight. And if you pay attention, you'll see a lot of bird references. Derek Abbott, that sounds familiar too. And it's it's not my fault. Let's keep track of Batman, Dwayne Mitchell, and I'll explain why later. Let's get a start of Brandon Hill. He is gonna go deep to his main man, Neil Sterling. Over 40 yards through the air on that one, and the next play, it's just not fair. LeVon Cheney with the dump pass, 7 0 Monmouth, only five minutes in. 14 0 after the quick Monmouth touchdown. Derek Abbott dumped Ramsey Owens. He's gonna fumble the ball, and it was a bad day holding the ball for the Colonials. Now Brandon Hill outside the red zone, picked off by Andy Smagira. That was one of the highlights for the Colonials in the first quarter. On to the second, it's 17 0 Monmouth after an early field goal. Hand off to Owens. He's going to split the defenders. Opens the Red Sea. He's going to get it to the 30 for the Hawks. Great day on the ground for Owens despite a couple of fumbles. Abbott sacked and taken down. They tried to steal the ball too, but luckily the rules say your knee goes down. The ball coming out doesn't really count. Zach Welch now with a carry. Long run to the 20-yard line. Now 20 to nothing moment. That led to a field goal. Dwayne Mitchell with the catch. The senior says no, stiff arm and a long gain. The senior receiver climbing the ranks for career receptions. We'll have more on that later. Next play, Ramsey Owens. There's his second fumble. The momentum is a stopped. Third quarter, 20 to nothing, Monmouth at the half. A field goal gives him the 23 nothing lead. Abbott will be sacked and another fumble. If you're counting at home, which would be really negative of you, that's number four on the next play, Hill. That main man we were talking about, there's Neil Sterling. Double covered and the score. 30 to nothing, Monmouth. Seconds left in the third, Abbott. This is what he can do, folks. Abbott takes Sean Gavin, their first points of the game. 37 to seven, Monmouth. You know, you actually did on the sideline. Very impressive, Abbott. Picked off by Mike Basile. He wanted Gavin, unable to get there though. And who told Basile to be on defense? He should be one of those running backs that, you know, break tackles like that. Taking down Abbott, trying to tackle the ball carrier. And while they have a 37 point lead, they're just gonna tack it on. Kevin Butler helps, pick six, 51 to seven. Early in the fourth quarter, Ramsey Owens with room. He will find a lane and get to the three yard line. Owens now up the gut for the score. That was Owens' first game back too, wasn't it? After it hurting the shoulder, you're That's absolutely right. correct. Backup quarterback Greg Depew sacked by the Colonials, one of the highlights on defense. And let's end on a good note, Abbott. He loves Russell Wilson. Who looks like Russell Wilson. And he plays like <laughs> Russell Wilson Has too. Finds number. Dwayne Mitchell, breaks away into the end zone for the score. 51 to 20. play a little bit later on in the show. We just might, foreshadowing everybody. It was a horrible first half, followed by an excellent second. Aside from Abbott's first start of the season, freshman standout Ramsey Owens again ran for over 100 yards. As a team, however, the Colonials fumbled the ball eight times and gave up over 500 yards on offense. Brandon Hill, LeVon Cheney, and Neil Sterling were not the only standouts on offense for either side. Wide receiver Dwayne Mitchell extended his ascension atop the Colonial history books. Now for the story that John has been alluding to at least five times, I would say. Dwayne Mitchell is number seven on the field, but number three in the record books. He currently sits at third place in career receptions between, behind Taiwan Massey and Shadre King. Mitchell needs four more receptions to tie for second and 37 to tie for first place. Think he can do it? I don't know. That's going to be a little over seven catches a game for him. Homecoming came and went for Robert Morris University. The alums came and cheered on their Colonials. Two well 
a crushing defeat. In the midst of the homecoming spirit, our own Hannah Smith went around town to talk with former colonials. We're here at homecoming 2014, which is the first homecoming under head coach John Banizak. With it being homecoming, a lot of football alumni come back and have new thoughts on the program. Everything around here, just look around, this is awesome. Like, we didn't have the stadium, we played at Moon my senior year, we, 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 uh, we finally got the stadium here and, you know, everything, the excitement, the, uh, the atmosphere on campus, everything's excellent, I love it. Well, a couple years back my senior year, I was a captain on the football field for this homecoming game, so it's a big deal. Yeah. Got really to pick the game-winning field goal against Lafayette two years ago. It was awesome. Senior, senior year. First time I ever started, snapping to him for a hold. It was a great game. Any of the players, stay focused. Stay focused is the big thing. That was, I always tell people, you know, my biggest, the biggest thing I got out of playing football here was it kept me focused. You work out, go to class, go to practice, do your homework, go to bed, do it all over again. There was no time to play around. I mean, the social life kind of sacrificed a little bit, but, you know, it, in the end, uh, you know, got me good grades, got me got me a good job, and you know, I'm very very happy with where I ended up. Even though the game didn't turn out quite the way the Colonials were hoping for, with a 51 to 20 loss to Monmouth, the Colonials can use this game as well as other losses to go into the conference play with Coach Banizak's help. But what really counts is that the alumni came back and enjoyed the game. I'm Hannah Smith, Colonial Sports Center. Back to you guys. Thanks, Hannah. The volleyball team extended their winning streak to three on Saturday against Central Connecticut State with a final score of three to two. And in those five sets, Leah Donovan led in kills with 13, Brianna Frakes in assists with, nine, with 29, and Melissa Bograd led in digs with 17. Last year, RME Volleyball began the season 0-14. After that, the Colonials went on to go 8-6 in the conference and fell to LIU Brooklyn in the NEC quarterfinals. You gotta say, that's pretty impressive. Well, they did it again. This year, Army opened the season with a 1-13 record and including their victory against the Bulldogs. As you can see, Army is now 4-0 in the Northeast Conference. Three Colonials registered a double-double in the win. Arden Fisher, no relation. Her double-double was her seventh on the season. Still no relation? Uh, nope. Because I asked you last week and you said no, so it could have changed. No, you know? nothing has changed. So coming up next, Nico Brett, like we said, did the unbelievable and it doesn't take only a few feet to score one goal. And we have two hockey players going to be in the studio with us. We're going to talk a little bit about the exhibition game that they just played and what we can see in the regular season this year. Terry Schaefer, Cody Wido, and Derek Abbott. Get ready for all of them coming up next. These boys are my heroes. They come every week to spend time with my children. At Robert Morris University, every student is expected to reach out to others. They can teach them something no one else can. Wisconsin. 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 They're role models to the children, and homework comes way before sports. Their grades have improved, and their lives are just a bit richer. <laughs> what they do for my kids is truly wonderful change someone's life, it changes yours forever. Robert Morris University. I call them my lifeline. Interesting, of course. I am here with Romo. How are you doing today, Romo? Great. All right, so Romo, just a few questions. How do you think the game is going right now for the Colonials? All right, on top of that, like, what do you think about the play of jo uh, Paul Jones and his defense just, just, just demolishing uh, Morgan State right now? All right, well, you heard it here first. Romo with his inside to the game. Back to you guys. Be sure to tune in to Colonial Sports Center every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. on armycentralmedia.com and Channel 98 around the Moon Township area. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. It seems like it was just yesterday that the men's hockey team was warming up on the ice of the Alaris Center at the NCAA tournament. 
It was quite the Cinderella story after losing nearly all of their games in the first half of the season. But one off-season later, the team is back with 19 returning players and ready to bring the noise. And ready with me right now is Cody Wido, captain, and Terry Schaefer, goaltender. So let's start with how last season's postseason experience kind of changed this year's team. Let's start with you, Cody. Um, well, I mean, anytime you can go through the postseason and come out on top, it's a big momentum boost for your team, especially since we're just a team that was up and coming, and especially the way we started at the beginning of the season. Terry? Uh, yeah, no, it gives you a lot of confidence. Uh, you know, that's and that's what you want to have. But uh, you know, just because we won the won uh, won our league last year doesn't mean anything's gonna be handed to us this year. That's for sure. Right. So there's not really much focus on last season. It's kind of just more moving forward at this point. Yeah, I mean, we've put last season behind us. Everyone's put it behind us already. So we're just trying to move forward for this season. Right. And you have 19 players returning, which is quite a bit. You're only losing one forward, Colin South two key defensemen, Blazik and Renwick. So how does, help, how does having so many players coming back kind of help the team in terms of depth? I mean, anytime you can return that many players, it's easy for the team because everyone knows the systems already. There's not that many freshmen you gotta bring in and teach them the systems and we can just go right from the start of it. Yeah, um, obviously bringing back that many guys, it's gonna be a huge boost and that, uh, you know, it kind of paves the way for the younger guys who come in now, and uh, hopefully they see the older guys doing the right thing, and they start getting in the right habits, and it's just, uh, you know, a continuous cycle from there. And speaking of the younger guys, are you seeing them fitting into everything? Yeah, I mean, they are. They had a couple struggles at the beginning of the year. I mean, school, you always gets on the freshman a little bit during practices when they messed up a little harder than you would on anyone else. But, I mean, yeah, they're coming along pretty well. Oh yeah, they're. I mean, they're. Uh, they're here. They're. They're ready to play. They're trying to. They're trying to get in the lineup. You know, obviously, as you said, we've only lost a couple of players that were in the lineup every day. So, I mean, they're out there working every single day because they want to be in the lineup just as bad as the seniors do. So, you said schoolie's pretty tough on the freshmen, and I'm sure he's tough on you guys as well. Were there any kind of specific situations where anything stood out to you guys? Um, not so much yet this year, but I'm sure there will be. He usually. We'll get on them pretty hard once or twice during the year. Yeah, every freshman gets it uh, <laughs> sooner or later. So everybody's got to come in at least once in their career here. <laughs> All right, so Cody, your line with Scott Jacklin and Zach Lynch had a lot of production last year. How are we going to see that kind of continue this year? Uh, hopefully we just continue with the chemistry that we had and are able just to keep scoring, helping our team out to get the goals that we need to win the games. And as I said before, Blasek and Renwick are both gone. How are you feeling about the defensemen in front of you now? I know John Ray is probably going to come in and have quite a few minutes on defense. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's just time for uh, the next man up to step up and do his job. That's all it comes down to. I mean, we're all hockey players, and, you know, uh, obviously Renwick and Blazik had some really valuable experience, but, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all these guys on our team have been playing hockey for a long time, so uh, they know what to do to get the job done. Now moving on to the goaltending situation, what what is the goaltending situation <laughs> at this point? Uh, well, me and Dalton, you know, obviously, uh, you know, 1A and 1B in whichever order you prefer that day. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's uh, it's just it's the same as it was before, I guess. I mean, just uh, just competing every day in practice, pushing each other, just being the best we can be a day at a time. Do you ever get tired of people asking about the goaltending situation? Because that is one of the top storylines, one of the hot topics around the team. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say, I mean, just about everybody I've talked to uh, over the past two months has always been asking uh, about the situation, how it makes me feel and all this and that. But, I mean, that's, that's the nature of sports, and we're both competitive guys. We both want to be in the net, and we both know we played a position that there's only one guy in the net at a time. So... Uh, I mean, you, you get tired of hearing about it, but at the same time, you know, it's it's a good place to be in. And then, Cody, is there any competition on offense? Response? I mean, yeah, there's always the competition. I mean, some guys, like, kind of know that they're going to be in the lineup, but then other guys know that they have to compete hard. And, I mean, no one's actually guaranteed in the lineup. I mean, the freshmen are going to have it tough. There's only one or two spots available for them to try to get into it. And, I mean, everyone just has to come to practice and work hard and show Coach Schooley what they can do and hopefully get into the lineup. And then you guys had an exhibition game this past weekend against Ryerson. What are the, some of the things that you guys have learned from then, and how do you kind of treat an exhibition game as compared to a regular season game? I mean, it's preseason. You just got to – you have it so you can see what you need to work on for the games that are coming up this weekend. I mean, we obviously didn't score, so we need to work on scoring a little bit. If their goalie played really well for them. I mean, we just got to put it behind us. We lost. 
there's nothing else we could say about it. I mean, just put it behind us and focus on Lake Superior State. Okay, well, hopefully those games to go a lot better. I know you haven't had a win against them. So good luck this weekend, and thank you. Thank you, Cody. Thank, thank you. you, Terry, for Thanks both being with us. Appreciate Great it. Great information from you guys. And moving on to the women's hockey team now. The women's hockey team had their first overtime game of the year against Maine on Friday. It ended in a 3-2 loss. Je Jessica Gazzola and Maeve Garvey each had a goal, and Jessica Dodds had 28 saves. The very next night, they redeemed themselves with a 1-0 win. Ricky Mayer had the lone goal on the evening. And yes, I'm back. Thank you, Terry and Cody, you. once again. Once a week, the USA Today releases their top 10 women's hockey teams in the country. Since the middle of last year, RMU flirted with the top 10 consistently. The Colonials aren't in the poll, but they continue to receive votes. Robert Morris takes on Colgate in a two-game homestand starting tomorrow at 3 at the 84 Lumber Arena. And let's move from the ice to the grass. Did you know that a Seahawk is a hawk that flies over the sea? I don't think that's been reinforced enough on this show. You know, I've never heard that Over before. the last few years. And <laughs> women's soccer wanted to get back on track, so they invited a certain avian variety to the North Athletic Complex. And yes, folks, that is a Family Guy reference. The bird is certainly the word. The bird, bird, bird. <laughs> bird is the word. Amanda Buck, <laughs> long pass, and Sydney McNutt with the shot. Head now. Becky Shoniker with a great save, and Alyssa Azanero with the shot and score. one nothing Wagner. Katie Austin for the Colonials at midfield. Lead pass Christy Hamilton. Shoots and it goes wide. And Katie Marcy with great pressure on that exchange. Hamilton to Greer Monahan. It goes high as the Colonials. They end up on the losing side once again as their record now stands. You know, at, at one of the, the worst. At nine and two. Actually, let's let's go on the opposite end. Two nine and two without a win in conference play. Even though the Colonials outshot the Seahawks 15 to 10, Wagner escaped with the victory. By the way, Becky Shoniker collected five saves on the afternoon. Who's that? And they're from the women's. Well, I don't know. From the women's now to the men's. Probably not that important. <laughs> and the men's soccer team took on George Washington on Sunday, and one person scored every single goal. To the pitch we go. But you can't guess who it is. I'm going to take a shot in the dark and say it's Nico Brett. Speedy Williams passes it to Nico Brett, who chips it up and way over the goalie. It looked like he didn't even see that coming. Terry Schaefer would have saved that. Williams again nabs the ball and connects with Brett once more, who shoots all the way from the 50-yard line. Goalie still doesn't see it coming. you think he'd see it. Corey McCurdy's got it now, gives it to Williams. And Brett gets it once again, slips it right past Vandermeers, goes straight through his fingertips, three goals. Patrick, Carl Reed, takes it up to the box. Brett is in perfect position, watch him line up in the center, and he just tapped it in. Goal number four. I don't even know what that kind of hat trick would be called. <laughs> I, I, don't ask me, I don't, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't know. The Colonials shut out George Washington 4 to nothing. All of those goals being scored in the second half. Brett is now second in terms of goals in a single game and is one of four RMUs to score four goals in one game. Speedy Williams, that's such a cool name. Speedy Williams had three assists and is the sixth player to notch three game or three assists in a single game. Just like the graphic told you, Nico Brett beat the Colonials. Yes, that is correct. 4 to nothing. Wouldn't you think he deserved an award after that performance? Brett was named the UADE Northeast Conference Player of the Week for his masterful performance. He now leads the nation in goals with 12 and is second in points with 26. On top of that, Brett is seventh all-time with 26 career goals and 62 points places him in ninth all-time in that category. And Haley and everybody at home, we are running out of time, so let's go to a commercial break. I hate to tease you there. Derek <laughs> Abbott, red shirt sophomore, the new starting quarterback. Yes, he will be in studio. He'll be here. With Aaron Kristen Kudla. Don't touch that dial. Of course. I am here with Romo. How are you doing today, Romo? Great. All right, so Romo, just a few questions. How do you think the game is going right now for the Colonials? All right, on top of that, like, what do you think about the play of jo uh, Paul Jones and his defense just, just, just demolishing? Uh, Morgan State right now. Hello, 
All right, well, you heard it here first. Romo with his inside to the game. Back to you guys. Be sure to tune in to Colonial Sports Center every Thursday, 9.30 p.m. on armycentralmedia.com and Channel 98 around the Moon Township area. Romo, have you downloaded the app? Romo, have you seen this app? My favorite part of it is the fully splatter. Check this out. When you click into it, you're going to go right to the top left. And as soon as you click on it, everything will be there that you need. So you can stay safe. Download the RMU Century Media app on the App Store. Romo likes it, and so will you. Colonial Sports Center with me in studio tonight is junior starting quarterback for the Colonials, Derek Abbott. Derek, thank you so much for joining me this, this evening. No problem. Now, you finally have one game under your belt, the homecoming game. Talk a little bit about that, and especially for your, uh, your first start of the season. Well, obviously, um, it wasn't the uh, outcome that we wanted. Uh, there's, uh, we've took you know, away some positives, and uh, there's also a lot of stuff that we could build on. Other than the fact that it was homecoming, you know, obviously it was a game that we wanted to win, but um, we want, we, every game now is a, is a must win. So. Now, going into the game, you, you knew it was homecoming, which is probably one of the biggest games that probably during a season. Did that put any extra pressure for you? Um, no, not really. I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, uh, the field is 100 yards long. Um, everything's still the same. You know, you still got to go out there and play a football game. Uh, so it didn't really matter whether it was homecoming. It could have been the Super Bowl. could have been a preseason game. It didn't really matter. So uh, it's just a football game. So It, it wasn't common knowledge that... Um, you were going to be starting. They actually only found out a few days ahead of time. What was it like whenever um, Coach Hicks sat you down and was like, hey, we're going to have you starting one of the biggest games yet this season? Well, it was actually because, you know, we had the bye week previous. So we, we kind of worked on, uh, on some stuff with me. So I, I had uh, an extra week to prepare, and that really, that really helped, I think, and uh, really adjusting to, uh, to the guys and the first-string guys and uh, getting familiar with Coach Hicks and how he likes to run things. So... Um, obviously, it was exciting to get to be able to play. Well, um, what was it like preparing with that with the first string people? I mean, um, it's probably not something that you were particularly used to um, playing with. What mm -hmm. talk us through a little bit of that? Of that. Well, I thought it was actually uh, it wasn't a, a difficult transition at all. One, uh, especially with the offensive line, um, seeing how as I live with all of them, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there I'm pretty used to being around them, and uh, I trust them because they know that if they don't block, then. <laughs> you hear about it later. Uh, but the, the receivers as well, uh, just getting timing down, getting the mesh down with the running back. So, um, li like, that extra week really mm -hmm. helped. So. Now, you said you lived with them. Is there anything yeah. that you guys take from maybe on the field that uh, take it back to the room and kind of mess with each other about? Oh, all the time. We, 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 mess, we, mess, uh, <laughs> we mess with each other all the time. I mean, probably stuff that I can't even say on camera. <laughs> But uh, they're, they're a great group of guys, and uh, I absolutely love being around them. Would you say that um, living together and living with them has really created a bond with that team, especially with you and um, the starters? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I trust them all because I know that they're going to they're gonna block for me. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to protect me a little bit more. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like I said, like, uh, those are a great group of guys, and uh, I know they're always going to have my back, even though I'm the smallest one in the, uh, in the apartment. So I kind of get bullied sometimes, but. <laughs> now I know we talked about you said you were the you're the smallest in there, but you can easily eat just as much as they can. Yeah, talk I'll, a little yeah. bit about that. I always said that, that now they'll tell you that they won't, but I I firmly believe that I can uh, I can keep up with them eating, mm -hmm. but uh, which is I don't know where it goes, but. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, um, going back to the game, is there anything in particular that you really do before a game that really gets you in focus and prepares you for um, whether you're playing Monmouth or anybody else? Um, 
it's kind of funny because I, I actually do one. I always talk to my dad before games, and we always just kind of bring everything down to earth. Um, obviously, I listen to the same music every mm -hmm. game. And then I also call, call one of my coaches from high school. Now, obviously, he can't be there. So I give him a call, and, you know, we always talk about the same things that we talked about in high school. So, you know, he'll ask me, you know, what did I eat for breakfast? What, uh, what, what, move, what show did I watch in the morning? So we all kind of, uh, we just talk about, like, the same things. And, and it's more stuff to just kind of calm me down, and, mm -hmm. and it's something that I've always done. So. Now, um, going into the next weekend, this is going to be your second game under your belt. Talk a little bit about that and your opponent that you're going to be playing. Well, well Sacred Heart's a great football team. They're, we obviously know that they're the uh, defending NEC champs, mm -hmm. and um, they, won that, uh, they won that title last year on our home field. And uh, I remember because I was up in the press box and I didn't even play. I was in a sling. And it hurt me just to watch that. And I wanted to be out there mm -hmm. and play. Um, so we, we know what's at stake. And we also know that we got to win out for the rest of the year in order to stay in this thing. Well, last question. Um, I know that you're a huge Batman fan, so I have to ask you this. If the bat signal went up right now at Joe Walton st Stadium, would you show up in the bat suit? Absolutely. Well, there's, there's no doubt. <laughs> well, I hope to see you soon then. Thank you very much. And good luck this weekend. Coming up after the break, it's everyone's favorite time of the show, Primetime Plays of the Week. Stay tuned and don't change that remote, not dial. G morning, sunshine. Wakey, wakey. Text me. Are your parents home later? We can hang. LUV, love you. JK. Holla back. Holla back. Holla back. <laughs> Are you with your friends? That's lame. We're in a huge fight right now. XO. What did you dream about? Something me? I did. Are you on your way to the I'm mall? Lonely. Nude pics. Send me some. Text me. I'm starving. What's for breakfast? Guten Tag! Your Highness Rose! I bring you arts enriched raisin blums, fortified with increased text scores and creative problem solving skills. It's good! And good for you. Bobby? Susie? Don't worry, that's just the power of the art! <laughs> Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org. Everything about buying a bigger place? Just waiting for a visit from the credit fair. There is no credit fairy. How else will I get a better credit score? Look, you keep your credit card balances low and only open a new card if you really need it. No fairy? There's no magic to improving your credit, but there's help, and it's free. Go to creditfairy.org. Yes, ready, ready. Oh, come on, Randy. Animal shelter, here I come. And no, I'm not crazy or emotionally damaged. That's a stereotype. I just belong to a total loser. I'm a good dog. So if you want a pet, adopt. And if you see Randy, tell him he dropped his wallet. Then primetime plays are back, number two. That's you. Oh, so, sorry, I thought I was your number one. We've got football, Derek Abbott who we just talked to, tosses it in the end zone. One of the better spots in that game. One of very few. And Nico Brett, he doesn't need a foot. All he needs is 50 yards. Nico and it's, Brett. And it's that easy. And those what are your primetime plays of the week. And coming up next week, we have Meet the Colonials. And let's hold there. We have an upcoming schedule for ya. Coming up next week, you will actually tomorrow, men's soccer goes to Bright Women's Hockey's at home with their two game homestand. Men's hockey versus Lake Superior State opening weekend, football at Sacred Heart. Volleyball goes to New Jersey Institute of Technology. Men's hockey and women, women's hockey take on their second game. And that will be that for your weekend ahead for the Colonials. We'll see you all at the next Soul week. Center. We won't even be here. We'll be at the Soul Center. We'll see you all next week. We'll Andy told Sal Scalia, even President DeLoma, we'll have them all for you. See you all next week from the Soul Center.